Dream alerts are boring. I've shown you how to do them a million times. I have videos linked in the description if you want to know how, but they're boring. Everyone's stream alerts kind of look the same. You get a little pop up says, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for following. Thanks for blah, blah, blah. And that's it. And you might get a shout out from the streamer. But what if you could alter the stream more? These days, streamers are pushing more and more for experiential based interaction in their live streams. And that starts with this video for you and for me. Because I'm redoing all my stream stuff now that I'm final, finally finishing the studio over the past couple videos and the next one. We got something cool coming. For this video, you'll of course need OBS Studio and a program called Atom. It's developed by Mr. Greggles, the crazy multicam drum streamer I interviewed uh, about a year ago now, I guess. And he's built his own stream controlling program. They've also created the vertical streaming plugin for OBS if you use that. It is kind of similar to StreamerBot but it has some of its own features and some of its own uniqueness that they've been really using. And this is what Mr. Greggles alluded to in my interview with him that he developed for himself originally to control all his crazy stream setups. And I'm finally implementing it in my studio and you can do so much. Atom gets super in depth and we're not gonna go into everything, but for this video, we're gonna create a basic rule that changes our background light colors using the Elgato LED strips. We're gonna change a complete graphic scene here behind me on the monitors that will show up in my main face cam and we're gonna have it trigger a raid scene in OBS Studio, all just from getting raided on Twitch. So once you have installed Atom and got logged in here, it is a, a paid program. I know how people feel about that, but that's, that's what we're rolling with. Once you've installed it, the homepage just has updates about it, tutorials, things like that. But if you go over here to rules, you can start setting up basically the the systems in place now if you go over to settings first you can set up different integrations so you can this is where you're going to link obs obs links with web sockets so if we pull in here my obs instance and we get the infinite screens thing going on here you go to tools web socket server settings figure out the port make sure it's enabled uh, it ships with web sockets 5 by default these days copy your password so you can just copy it and then come back over here new integration obs you type in the port Type in the host and it's going to detect uh, OBS instances connected to Atom on your network. So you can actually run multiple PCs. We'll talk about that in a moment. Paste in your password and click save. You can see here I already have two different PCs connected with OBS. Again, we'll cover that in a minute. You can set up uh, Twitch channel point redemptions. Uh, you have to basically create these from within Atom because Twitch has this limitation where if you create channel point redemptions in a specific program only that program can change it and you can't change the ones created on twitch and blah 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 i'm honestly not a huge channel point person since i multi-stream so i leave you to watch nutty's video for that we're going to focus on recreating our own kind of alert system so i've made my example rule here and you can just see what it looks like you have your trigger which in this case i have it set, set to a chat message for us to test then you can set conditions. So like it needs to check to make sure that something else has already happened. So you can build up like tiered. So like whenever you first get one sub, one thing can happen. But if you get five subs, then something else can happen. Those kinds of things. You can build up those kinds of cool stuff. And then you have a bunch of actions that can happen as a result of the trigger happening. So we're again, we're going to use a, a chat message to test out our raid functionality. Uh, but it's the same idea. You can create folders to organize them. We're just going to create a new rule. And we're going to recreate this whole thing. So I'm going to press the, the power button here to turn off our previous one. You can also just press play to test it. So I guess you don't need to. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just build it from scratch. Raid on Twitch. First and foremost, we need to set up a new trigger. This is going to be device. We're going to choose Twitch. Twitch is our device in this case. We're going to choose Twitch. Trigger type. You have pretty much everything that the Twitch API supports here, including shoutouts now. Uh, but we are going to go over here and choose... Where is it? Incoming raid. You can also filter by specific channels or types of viewers. If you have specific channels that raid you, raid you regularly or you want to customize it based on a specific channel, you can do that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to set it up for a normal raid. That is the only trigger we need. So then we're just going to go straight to actions. New action. We're going to choose our... It supports Elgato lights, and that is the only direct lights it supports. It supports controlling like DMX and other things through MIDI. I don't have any of that kind of stuff set up. I do, I would like them to see them support either like you, you can do uh, web hooks for certain things, but I would love to see IQ integration because I've just got all this Corsair IQ morals, murals stuff set up that I'll show you in the next video uh, that I would love to be able to trigger with this. There's no connectivity for that. I, I want to push either Corsair or 
the Atom team to support that very soon because there's a huge amount of stuff you can do with that. Uh, but we're gonna choose my main. We're gonna choose my LED strips here from my Elgato lights. Action type. We're gonna make sure that change light state. It's set to on in case they're off for whatever reason. Like the one in front of me is off, but the one over here beside me is on. Zero second delay on that. We're gonna add another one. Same. Actually, we're gonna choose the other one. Change light state. Set it on. Add a new action. Go back to the left one. We're gonna change the color. We're gonna set the color to bright red. We're gonna put no delay on that. Then we're gonna put new action, same thing. Uh, it's actually easier instead of doing new action each time, by the way, if you don't wanna be annoying like me, you can just duplicate it. Well, now we can change light color to white. Action delay on that, one second. Can we do 0.5? We can, all right, half a second, white. Don't keep making new ones, duplicate. Light color, red, half a second. Duplicate. Delete that one I accidentally made. Set it to white. Duplicate. Set it to red. And then we're going to add the same thing, but we're going to do it for the, the right LED strip. So we're going to duplicate this one. Change color. We're going to set it to white instead of red first. And then we're going to use the little handle right here. And drag it up to change the order because events do happen sequentially and we want it we want the zero second delay things the initial action to happen at the same time so i want at the same time for them both to be set to white and red all you know alternating so i'm gonna use arrow to hide these so it's easier to you know see our actions here because we effectively we want to recreate all of this so the one with the delay we have turn on our lights we have changed them to white and red, and then we have one alternating. We need to change the other one to alternate. And I'm going to go through and do this to set all of this up for the different lights, because this is going to be a little tedious. All right, we have our lights set up to flicker. We're also going to, in here, add a new action. We're going to set my main key light to just turn off and on. Add new action after one second. We're just going to turn it back on. We can minimize these. So, so far, if you're trying to keep up, so far our chain is that as soon as a raid is detected and triggered through the Twitch API, we have both of these LED strips come on, and then they alternate every half second for a few seconds between white and red to just be like, you know, red alert on, on the Enterprise deck or something, and then my main key light is going to turn off and on for a second as well. Then we're going to come in here. And we're going to trigger my background screen, which is seen in the peripheral vision of my main camera, to go from this live graphic that I have going to a RAID graphic. Now, this graphic is set up just through OBS. I have OBS running on this machine, and it is displaying a projector preview full screen on the vertical monitor for the looping video that I have saved. To connect this to this version of Atom, you just download Atom onto a secondary computer. You log in with your account, and when it asks you how you want to set it up, you just say that you want to set it up based on an existing configuration, and it's going to say, okay, we're a worker node, and you're good to go. And you can install these versions of Atom. It's just the normal download version, but you can install Atom on all these other computers, and it will run as a worker node that this version can interact with, and it will detect any devices that that computer is set up with that Atom supports, as well as any OBS instances you have connected. And you just connect them through the web sockets as it is, and it, as I showed you before. So now I can come in here to my rule. We have done all the light switches. I'm now going to say new action device. We're going to choose the OBS version running on this computer, which is a Corsair Vengeance, so just Vengeance. And then you have all the normal action types. So change scene. We're going to change the scene to... Sometimes it takes a second for that to show up, so we're going to go ahead and create a rule. New action, device, OBS on that second computer, action type, change scene, there we go. We're going to change it to the raid scene. Then we're going to duplicate this. We're going to add a delay of 30 seconds and change it to the last scene. So that way if I have other scenes that I set up that I trigger with Stream Deck or Atom or whatever that it shows other graphics in the future, currently I just have the two, but if I have it showing others, it'll just change back to whatever scene it was on before rather than having to manually map out whatever scene it should be at, which is really cool. So we've set up our raid here, other than we have not actually changed my scene in OBS. For that, we're going to go ahead and add new item. This time we're going to use OBS running on this PC. 
we're going to change scene. Again, the scene field isn't going to show up at first, so we're going to delete this. We may have to relaunch. In the meantime, we can go ahead and add a new action. We're going to add Twitch as a target. We're going to say... Chat announce. Color. Purple. Raid incoming! And that's just going to post in the chat that a raid is coming as well. We're going to save. Something you should know about Atom is that the triggers and the rules, if you don't add delays, are incredibly fast. They are some of the fastest triggering options that beat out every other chatbot and beat out most other tools, official or otherwise, for Twitch and YouTube. Which is freaking awesome, but it means if you want a delay, don't assume there's going to be a built-in delay. Like, you need to add your own. But it's freaking awesome how fast and how low latency they have this down. Alright, we're going to come back in here. Change our... Main scene. Still not populated. This is just a weird quirk. Oh, actually. I think it thinks it's not connected. Could not connect. Okay. Tools. WebSocket server settings. 4456. Maybe I have to change the port. Since I'm using it for another one. Save. There we go. Okay. So if you are using Atom on multiple PCs, you'll need to use separate ports for that. I knew that. I just set it up fresh again. All right. So now if we did... There we go. There's our scenes. And I have a raid scene set up in OBS. Raid graphic scene. All right. Now we click save. We have our entire rule built here. And we can go ahead and test it out with this play button. And we can watch what happens. Oh, I had the delay. I know what happened. We had the delay before our OBS. It was supposed to happen with that. All right, we're going to save it. We're going to do it one more time. Wee, woo, wee, woo, wee, woo, wee. Boom. And that's it. But that raid scene is all custom scripted in OBS. The way that I did that was using some custom graphics I built in After Effects, as well as text labels for the late whoever raided the latest tips, all of that. A script I will have linked below that shows the clock, among other things. And then I had to carefully craft the soundscape to sound like what you would expect, both kind of a blue screen as well as a hackery bio scene to sound like. Just going for the super sci-fi, not reality kind of setting, because you, you want it to sound cool. And for that, I used today's sponsor, SoundQ by Pro Sound Effects, a wonderful sound effects and music library workflow tool. SoundQ is a new app from Pro Sound Effects, who has been developing sound libraries and software to help creators to bring their ideas to life through sound since like 2004, a very long time. They have a massive library, and SoundQ is their new app to kind of integrate into your workflow without needing to open up a web browser, download your songs, keep track of your files, especially if you use apps like Pro Tools or Adobe Premiere or Reaper, you can easily just insert your clips into video timelines. I'm a DaVinci Resolve user, but we do have some drag and drop and download support built in. If you sign up for the free plan, you get access to over 2,000 sound effects, 100 music tracks and stems. You have just so much available to you. And then if you sign up for the paid plan, which is extremely affordable, you get over 100,000 sound effects, 20,000 plus music tracks, and you can get three months free on an upgraded plan with coupon code EposVox at checkout. So I've opened the SoundQ app here. I'm just showing you what you can get with the free option. Of course, if we want to build out our kind of 90s hackery computery scene, I can just search for computer sound effects. And by going to collections on the left here, you can choose the free sound effects as well as Creative Commons sounds that you can actually use as well, which is pretty cool. So here we have some options. We got some typing, we got some room tone, we got some beeps. I like that. We can loop it. We got some typing. 
Some room tone. Those are some good options. If we go to free sound, what do we got? Oh yeah. Oh, that'll work for the boot up. It's super loud and aggressive, but we can tone it down. It is, it's a very fine balance to get computer sounds that aren't like aggressive, but we can tweak that. So we can go ahead and click the arrow to drag and drop. And we can try to drag it into my resolve timeline here. Oh, and it works. That's amazing. Now it's right here in my timeline. And if I was smart and thought in advance and had the scene open that I wanted to generate my graphic in, we'd be good to go. Since I don't, we want to import it into OBS. I can change my drag and drop option and we can choose save to folder on disk, high quality downloads, and then we click the arrow. It's gonna download the file and we can just consistently keep it in a specific folder here, which is actually automatically in our downloads folder, sound cue audio. And then we can just bring them into OBS or our audio editor to start tweaking EQ and things like that. It is that easy. Like that, that, that is all there is to it. It is pretty rad. Having it in a dedicated app like this, both for music and sound effects, means that you can easily just, you know, keep all of your audio searching in one place. You don't got to keep searching the web. You have these different libraries you can choose from and you can build your own collections. So if you find a bunch, like for example, when I was originally searching these, I found a bunch of sound effects that I liked but didn't necessarily want for this project. I can build a collection of them and then have them to reference for later. You can find the right sound as quickly as possible. This absolutely rules. You can head on over to the link in the description. Again, use coupon code EPOSVOX to get three months free if you get an upgraded plan. Still gives you the full features for those three months, or you can sign up for the free one. No credit card required. Let me know what kind of crazy room involving experience altering alerts and integrations you're building for your stream in the comments below. And you gotta click this video to watch how I'm evolving my multi-cam streaming setup to really just travel with me throughout my studio. Remember to be kind, rewind.